wanted to take a closer look into the 911 murder. Police say they made a lot of mistakes on the night of Helen Harrion's death. 16 WAPT Scott Simmons investigates the 911 protocol. It is a chilly 911 call. No, I want emergency. Oh, I have a, a, a prowler around my house. The last call 67 year old Helen Harrion ever made. It's 2715 Kings Road Avenue. What's your name, please? Um, Ruth Harrion. We sent it, police. Thank you. Thank you. 13 seconds. That's how long the call lasted. It was six hours later when the 67 year old victim's family found her beaten, strangled, and shot in the face. That's six hours after police have responded but never made any contact or thoroughly checked the property. I do think that our officers could have done a better job. And I police Chief Lindsey Horton retired a week after this incident. And when we asked the city of Jackson, they refused to provide anyone to answer my questions about police training on a prowler call. Our feedback 16 line is full of calls asking who's accountable. They knew it was something wrong. She wouldn't have called 911. For a city response, city spokeswoman Sheila Bird told me she, quote, couldn't get that arranged. But Councilman DeKeith or Stamps had plenty to say. And I'm going to be even more aggressive uh, in, uh, in, in seeing that the resources are there necessary for training, for, uh, for retraining, for recertification, and everything that those people need so that people can have full trust and confidence in the 911 system. Do you think that's tarnished now? Well, you know, we got re to retool this. We have to work hard to rebuild the public confidence in the 911 system. There are questions about how the 911 operator and police handled this call. According to state records, as of October of last year, 65 911 dispatchers worked for the city of Jackson. As of that time, three were not certified yet. We don't know if the call was dispatched by a person who is certified to be a 911 operator or not. The standards for being a 911 operator in the state of Mississippi took a dramatic increase back in 1993. Back then, during Governor Kirk Fordyce's administration, they passed laws that said to be a 911 operator, you had to have at least 40 hours of training, that you had to be recertified within three years. But because of low pay and what is considered a very stressful job, the turnover rate for a 911 operator is very high. The standard is about two years. If you're six months as a dispatcher, you're a veteran. Maggie Taylor has 10 years in the seat as a 911 operator. She works for the city of Brandon. If it's a priority call, like a fight, a disturbance, you want to stay on the phone because things change just like that. If someone says there's a prowler trying to get in their house or is on their property, yes, it, we, we would probably want to make contact with that person. Former JPD officer and now Brandon Police Chief William Thompson says his agency wants its officers to make contact with a 911 caller before leaving the property. Every situation is different. Um, under most circumstances, in an in-progress call, a 911 operator is supposed to keep you on the land. Robert Graham is a 911 dispatch expert. He trains operators across the nation. He says there are many unanswered questions about this incident, like were there other calls the operator was trying to get to? Uh, unfortunately, it's the situations that don't go right are the ones that you hear the most about. There are an estimated 3,000 emergency calls made in Hines County on any given day. But it is the last one made by Helen Herrion, raising questions as police focus on a suspect in custody and what could have happened if this 911 call had gone differently. In Jackson, Scott Simmons, 16 WAPT News.